Regarding the nature of time, there are no shortage of theories. Philosophers, physicists, a lot of people talk about it. As an observational cosmologist, Wendy, can what you see going back in time helpful in understanding the nature of time? I mean, the interesting part from cosmology is that you can actually um, probe back in time. Right? You have a window into, I mean, it's a time machine in a sense. You're looking back in time. Um, but in terms of the nature of time, that's, uh, that's okay. I mean, I think that's a great point. I mean, as a, patient, I come on as, as a time machine going back in time. And therefore, what you can show is that, and where I want to push you, is that, is that you, you, you have a beginning. And so the observational cosmology, what, what I'd like you to say, the observational cosmology comes up to the point where you, where you have a beginning. So the theorists have to deal with, with the fact that there was some kind of beginning. Now they can, have a, they can do whatever they want. They can have an oscillation. They, but they now have to come to a, a, fa a, a, a firm fact that they mm -hmm. have a beginning to deal with. They have to deal with it. That, 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 that point alone would be great. Mm -hmm. Okay. What, what observational cosmology gives you is the opportunity to peer directly back in time. You, you see that the universe is expanding now, so you know in the past things had to have been closer together, that there was a time in the universe where um, the universe was very hot, very dense. There was a beginning, an, uh, an origin. Um, and so it, it, it then forces the question of, well, what came before that? What is time? How did time get created? You know, what is time? But it, but it forces you to, to acknowledge that there was a beginning to the universe, a beginning of what we would consider time, what we measure. How can you be so sure there was a beginning? Um, so we see the universe is expanding now. We can extrapolate back. It implies an origin, a beginning to the expansion of the universe. That's not the only technique that we have available, because if there had been uh, an early explosion in the universe, so you extrapolate back, you know that matter uh, would have had to have been more dense, would have had to have been hotter. Um, if there was a Big Bang origin to the universe, then there ought to be uh, observational evidence that 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 origin occurred, that Big Bang. Um, and so you can predict what the temperature of that background radiation would be. You can go out and measure it. You'd say that now, because the universe has been expanding in the intervening time, that radiation has cooled. Uh, it's now three degrees above absolute zero. And satellites have made very precise measurements of the temperature of the microwave background. It's uniform in every direction. There's no other way to explain the uniformity of this radiation unless it happened over all of space. There are many indications that there, there was an origin to the universe, a Big Bang origin. So again, you are now forcing through observation, through diverse observation, the fact that there was an origin. So any theorist having to deal with time, whether a philosopher or a physicist or a mathematician or whatever, now is forced to deal with the fact that the universe had an origin. Is anybody dealing with the nature of time now has to confront the fact that there was an origin, a Big Bang origin for the universe. Um, you can, of course, probe back further than that and say maybe there were oscillations and contractions and different things over which we have no ability to make measurements at the current time and test, but it, conf it confronts the issue that 13.7 billion years ago there was a fiery explosion, an origin um, to the universe we know.